Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to a very special playthrough. This is Judge Dredd, Countdown Sector 106. This was originally a iOS game, however it got released on Steam today, and essentially this is a one-person game book tabletop RPG. We're actually going to be reading a book and making choices similar to the old Choose Your Own Adventure books when we were kids, and then rolling dice for combat, we'll have stats, kind of interesting it really caught my attention and I love Judge Dredd I actually love both movies I read a little bit of the 2000 AD comics and I thought that this was right up my alley so just remember you see that ugly mug right there he is the love so let's go ahead and start a new game there's gonna be a lot of reading during this just letting you guys know this is gonna be pretty much the game besides some uh, dice rolls and some decisions made so if this isn't really your style, I completely understand, but I really wanted to have something that was a little bit different from everything else on the channel, so here we go. Before entering Mega City 1, you must choose your difficulty. Classic. The hardest setting should only be chosen by experienced judges and gamebook adventures players. You start the story with standard stats, you can use as many bookmarks as you like, I suppose bookmarks are like save points. Casual. This is the easiest mode. This should be chosen by inexperienced judges, new gamebook adventure players, or those who want the ultimate casual reading experience. You receive an extra medikit and increased stats to help you. If you fail to complete the gamebook on this mode, then you do not deserve to be wearing the uniform. Novice mode also allows you to go back at any time and reevaluate your decisions, as well as make a free choice anytime you want and request healing from Central when needed. Well, that just sounds boring. Despite the fact this is my first adventure, we are going to go for classic. No guts, no glory. And we are getting right into this. You stand before Sector House 106, about to report for duty. You consider the circumstances that have brought you to this assignment. A Sector House is the linchpin of the Justice Department in an average sector, in so much as any sector in Mega City 1 can be called average. But following a series of unrelated deaths, injuries, retirements, and transfers, this sector has suddenly found itself short of senior street judges. And here's Dread in all of his glory. A number of experienced judges are being reassigned to fill this temporary shortfall, foremost among them yourself, Judge Dredd. Upon entering the main foyer, you are faced with a familiar chaos. Perps are being led to their cells by arresting officers and citizens are being brought in for questioning or to collect stolen goods retrieved by Justice Department. Auxiliary scramble trying to deal with the mayhem. A judge introduces himself to you. Sir, Judge Mannheim, welcome to Sector 106. We weren't expecting you for another hour or so. Sector Chief Lush is in control room at the moment and wishes to speak with you before you start your patrol. Once he's done so, I recommend you use the time available to prepare for your patrol. You're free to use any of our facilities before B-Watch begins their shift. You move on to meet with Sector Chief Lush in the control room. And there's... Him. Oh wow, that's a nasty scar across his head. And looks like things are very, very bad. You walk into the control room. The room is a hive of activity and efficiency as judges and auxiliary... Whoa, what is this? Okay, this is for bookmarks. Cool. Activity and efficiency as judges and auxiliaries hand out assignments to deal with the day-to-day -day crimes found in the sector. Live camera feeds bring up to the second information for ongoing situations, providing judges on the ground with the updates they need to perform their duties. Lush is a senior officer who you know only by reputation. A judge of the old school, he has worked his way to his current position through fierce determination and a strict application of the law. A man worthy of command. Lush is rapidly approaching a time where retirement looms, however. You can see age and old injuries from the streets have begun to catch up with him. He grimaces as he rises from his chair and approaches, shaking his head. A pleasure to meet you, Dredd. This is my team. Lush indicates a number of senior judges watching the vid screens alongside the sector chief. Gonzalez, Mersham, Wilbur, Toaster, Palmer, Quan. I believe you worked with Quan before? Together we run the sector, and while things can never be regarded as great, I like to think we do as good a job as any sector house. It's good to have you on board. The loss of so many senior judges could have really let the perps off the hook. Gonzalez here was able to get through the necessary paperwork in time, so there should be enough officers out there. Mersham is B-Watch commander, so he will be looking after you, at least initially. Toaster and Quan oversee A and C watches, respectively. I'm sure you'll get to work with them later. I'm due to speak at the opening of the new Maestro Heights development at Harry Houdini Block, hence the full regalia. We have the normal problems of any sector, plus the added issues of having port facilities, although we keep a tight lid on things. There are a few ongoing investigations you might want to become familiar with. Other than that, I doubt there is much more I need to say to a judge of your caliber. 
Now I must go prepare in my office. Gonzalez here will look after any paperwork you need. It's nice to have you on board. Having completed his introduction, Sector Chief Lush nods to you and the rest of his team before departing to this side office. If you have any further business here, turn to 99, or if you choose to leave the area and prepare to go on your patrol, turn to 117. Well, let's actually see if we have any further business. You decide you might need to be sure on one or two things before proceeding. If you want to ask Lush about ongoing investigations, turn to 93. However you wish to discuss your patrol with Judge Mersham, turn to 825. You may watch how the control room operates, or choose to leave the area and prepare to go on patrol. Let's go ahead and ask Lush about the ongoing investigation so we know what's going on around town. In the privacy of a small side office, Lush, quick, excuse me, Lush quickly gives you an overview of some key investigations currently in progress. We have an ongoing and undercover operation in the port area. If you get leads on any smuggling activity, you will need to let Mersham know so he can coordinate efforts with the Wally Squad. Last thing we need is for the smugglers to get wind of our investigation and close shop just because we pulled over some small fry. We're after those behind the smuggling. Coffee, ziz, sugar, arms, you name it, someone's trying to move it through the sector. I understand we're closing in on some major players, so you may be called in as backup at some point for the judges already on the ground. We also have a couple of serial killers on the prowl. Ah, I think that would actually be more of a priority. One appears to be killing drivers on some of the roadways not covered by surveillance cameras. We believe the perp, or perps, are operating from a vehicle and are equipped with some military-grade weapons. The other killer is targeting slab walkers around the docks, although we have a few leads we are working on and Quan tells me to expect an arrest soon. Finally, we're trying to bring down the major mob figure in the area. Sal Gonzati is one of the most careful hoods I've ever come across. Oh, he speaks through his crooked lawyers. He's able to beat our lie detectors every time. Sooner or later, we'll get him, but like I said, the creep is a hard man to pin anything on. Well, now I really have to get to Houdini. If you need anything else, talk to Mersham. So that's good to know. Um, let's go ahead and discuss our patrol with Judge Mersham, speaking of which. Come in, Dredd, Mersham says, gesturing you into his office. You have a roving brief, but I also want you to patrol the northwestern quadrant as you'll be the senior judge assigned to that area during B-Watch. The area is rife with hoovy gangs or juvie gangs and has a lot of street level crime, which I know is your forte. A number of the local perps have gotten wind of our judge shortage and think they can get away with their crimes more easily. I want you to dissuade them. Your law master will be updated with details on your patrol area. Since you have not worked this sector before, I recommend you make full use of the data it can provide. We've heard rumors of a major heist going down somewhere in the area and have spotted a couple of out-of-sector heisters nearby. We're sure you can handle it, but backup will be available if you request it, just in case you can't. Your meeting with Mersham is over. You move on, leaving him to his paperwork. I got tons of stuff to do. Well, this doesn't seem to have any uh, time effect, so let's see how the control room operates. You stay in the control room for a short while, checking to see how the place works. It's soon apparent that it's a textbook example of efficiency, and you can tell the men and women staffing it are dedicated to their roles. Having satisfied your curiosity, you move on. Now let's go ahead and prepare to go on patrol here. The Sector House provides you with numerous ways in which to prepare yourself for patrolling the streets. You have time to perform three of the following tasks before your patrol starts. You can report to the firing range to get in some practice. You can report to the armory to upgrade your equipment. You can visit the mess hall to have a meal. You can use a sleep machine to get some much needed rest after your nearly continuous 72 hours on the streets. Holy crap. You can visit the briefing room to get up to the minute crime updates as to what's happening in the sector. You can go to the garage to see if they can fine tune your lawmaster bike. And if you perform, if you perform three tasks and wish to hit the streets, then turn to 515. So we can only choose three of these. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go, my first thing I'm going to use a sleep machine. Being up for 72 hours continuous is no bueno. Although you are not a fan of the sleep machines, you realize they are absolutely necessary for judges to perform their duties as well as they do. The auxiliary in charge quickly leads you to one of the six machines and turns it on. It feels only moment, like only moments later you awaken, fully refreshed. Just over an hour in the machine means you are ready to hit the streets again. Your vitality increases by eight and your fitness increases by one. You leave the area and move on. The auxiliary gives the machine a quick clean before the next judge arrives to use it. So... Let's check our inventory here, and oh, check this out, it's a character sheet. 
Under undercover operation in port area reporting me. How cool is that? And it has our stats right here. Fitness, offense, def we, man, we need some offense bad. Authority 8, Lawgiver Skill 8, Lawmaster Skill 8. Very cool. So that one's cleared out for us. Um, I do want to go to the briefing room. Information is power here. So we go to the firing range or the armory. Let's do... Let's do the firing range. Actually, no. Let's do the armory. Lawgiver expert. Achieves a, law, a lawgiver skill of 10 or above. The armory is full of tech judges working on equipment and ensuring everything is in full working order before the judges hit the streets. A tech by the name of Kinson takes your lawgiver from you and assigns you a replacement, noting that according to his records, your current one has been long overdue for servicing. You manage to get a few shots off on the firing range with your new gun and find it to be perfectly balanced. Your lawgiver skill increases by one. That's nice. So we already did go on the firing range. That's cool. So let's go ahead and visit the briefing room and get the up to minute crime updates. You take your place at a terminal and begin to have the latest crime data passed to you through your headphones. You are made aware of the current crime figures for the sector and wanted perps to be on the lookout for. You are also given information about a number of the key buildings that may be targeted and have been targeted in the past in this sector by criminals. A number of criminals are featured in the briefing, giving you the rundown of them, their associates, crimes, equipment, tactics, and the areas in which they operate. This is nice. Each of these pieces of detail can be a real help to a judge on the streets, and you pay attention to the details provided. Sal Gonzati is the major mob figure in the sector. He's the undisputed king of the rackets and has numerous underlings reporting to him. He has no criminal record to speak of, something rare among the criminal fraternity. The Ripper Gang are Gonzati's main rivals, although they are mostly limited to crime involving prescribed products which they import through the docks area. Their main weakness is a fondness for the very items they peddle. The leaders of this group are unknown, and it's been even suggested that Gonzati himself is in charge, although at a distance, for anyone wishing to replace him would probably approach his main rivals to see if they could be allies. That's pretty smart. Vinny Lombargo is the final major organized crime figure active in the sector. He runs a far smaller group than his comp competitors and survives on the margins. It's believed he has survived as long as he has because of good connection with mobsters based in other parts of the city. The McJoes are a notorious family of heisters, most of whom are currently serving time in the ISO cubes. However, several members of this gang are still out there and are likely to commit high-profile armed robberies. Mo, Bo, and Joey Joe McJoe, well, are all experienced perps with long criminal records. Another gang of heisters is led by one Jackson Fair. Unlike the McJoes, he has managed to avoid the attention of Justice Department. Not especially smart, he is, has some sharp mob accounts making sure he can launder his ill-gotten gains. As yet, Fair has not been positively tied to any armed robberies, although word on the street is that he has committed a number of heists where the victims are unwilling to approach the Justice Department for one reason or another. The Dockside Strangler is one of the two most active serial killers in the sector. Mostly targeting slab walkers in the docks area, he is the target of a task force led by Judge Kwan. It is unlikely your patrol route will bring you into contact with this creep, which means we probably will. A second prof um, uh, prolific killer is the Roadway Killer. Believed to use a souped-up armed vehicle of some sort, this killer prowls the Megways and has access to some major firepower. The killer seems to have good knowledge of camera black spots and has avoided detection to date. This killer is known to be active in your patrol area. More creeps and details on their crimes appear on your monitor. Half an hour quickly passes as you become familiar with the data and feel ready for the streets. So that's it, and we can't go to any of the other options. Let's hit the streets. Once you've finished your preparations, you go to the garage and climb onto your Lawmaster. The perps of 106 are about to get a rude awakening. You leave the sector house behind, riding your Lawmaster along a four-lane Megway. The high-speed route rapidly takes you to your patrol area where you begin your shift in earnest. You drive down one of the main thoroughfares on City Bottom. Nearby Ken Russell block is the turf of the Russell Root Boys, a notorious juvie gang, while the Samuel Watton shopping promenade is a favorite target for petty criminals. As there are currently no crimes being reported in your proximity, you take a moment to consider where to patrol next. So, we can take out the petty criminals, or we can take care of the notorious juvie gang. So, I don't want to deal with petty criminals. Let's go... Let's go to the Ken Russell block. You drive down the old block towering above a city bottom. 
variety of smaller buildings and shops line the street leading up to the block plaza. Up ahead, you can see a group of rude boys, aged 15 or 16, loitering outside of a shoe sh a store, strut shop. One of them suddenly dashes down a side alley. Do you jump off your lawmaster to chase the fleeing juvie? If so, turn to 300. Would you prefer to call in backup? Do you question the remaining juvies rather than chase the one running away? Or perhaps you drive on past pretending not to know what has happened and stealthily return so you can spy on them. Oh. Let's go ahead and do the subtle approach. Let's just drive by and then spy on them from afar. You drive on for a short while before moving down a parallel street. You get an eye in the sky camera from control to follow them as they move off down a side street and are rejoined by the juvie who ran off earlier. Their behavior suggests that they are up to no good. As you observe them and they suddenly and they suddenly grab a woman and cut her handbag strap with a knife. One punches her in the face before they move towards an older man. Ooh. So... You ride on your lawmaster and blast the first one of the gang. You can in an attempt to intimidate the others into surrendering. You can run up to them with your lawgiver and attempt an arrest, or you can wade into the group with your day stick by turning to 893. Let's wait into the group with the day stick because we have the element of surprise. The rude boys watch as you approach, holding your day stick in hand. Well, crap. Dumb law jock ain't even using his gun, one observes. That's, there's plenty of us. Get him. You manage to maneuver yourself into a better position to avoid being attacked from all sides, ensuring that your back is covered. Your grip tightens on your day stick. The first two juvies move forward to fight, so we gotta roll the fight dice. Draw your weapon, you must fight. So let's attack. Rude Boy 1 moves to block the attack. So I'm not exactly sure how this works. Rude Boy 1 is hit. Rude Boy takes five or six damage. Rude Boy 1 attacks. So I guess a fitness check is to dodge. Let's see what happens here. You rolled a 9, failing. You lose 1 from your next rolled highest dice. That's not good. You must defend... Okay, so defense is separate. We got a lot of defense. You dodge and take no damage. Rude Boy 2 attacks. So we gotta defend ourselves. So let's attack. Doubles. Rude Boy takes 10 damage and is defeated, and Rude Boy 2 attacks. Let's go ahead, let's keep attacking. Wow, these guys are really out of their league. Well, there's 6. So he took... Oh, he dodges and takes no damage. That's unfortunate. There's 8. We're still taking no damage, though, so that's good. There we go, there's 10. You deal a crushing blow and Rude Boy 2 is defeated. Justice has been served, creeps. Yeah. Nice. Oh, if you get the better of these young upstarts, turn to 599. With your superior skills and training, you manage to down the first two, who now lie unconscious on the ground. Two more Rude Boys tentatively approach you. Oh, we gotta fight these guys too. Time to wield the day stick again. There's eight. These guys seem a little bit tougher, maybe. Rude Boy 3 takes eight damage and is defeated. Never mind. Oh, this guy might actually hit me. Hit. Got a 10. Oh. Nope. No damage done. Outclassed. Rude Boy 4 is hit and he takes five damage. So he's almost dead. Yeah, all the defenses. There's plinking off my armor. Oh! That's not good. That that would have... Uh, Rude Boy 4 dodges and takes no damage. And if we were playing the Star Wars D6, that would have been horrible. Well, here's 7. Oh, I've been hit. I take 7 damage. That's no bueno. There's six. There we go. He's go he's gone. We took a little plink, but chose a one-way ticket to Resyke. 
Yeah. You take these down these two, turn to 282. Prep record, Carl Winter. The perp lies unconscious on the ground. Looking around, you notice that the last of the group have decided to split, which is unfortunate. You contact Control, who inform you that another judge in the vicinity is already en route to intercept any escapees. You search your prisoners and discover an assortment of weapons, but of interest, most interest is an unusual object you find on one of the juvies that you've never come across before. A small gadget. The black and white object fits into the palm of the hand and has a ring of golden colored stars around the edge. There's a small speaker at the top of its front face with a large red button beneath it. An LED display shows the number 243 on it, although it appears unchanging. Beneath this is the legend VOD in golden lettering. One last component is a small judge's head on a small antenna that bobs gently backwards and forwards as you hold this in your hand. As you are examining it, you accidentally press the button and a tiny voice can be heard from the speaker. I am the law. You ask Vijuvia about it and he says he picked it up from a street vendor. You arrange for control to pick up this minor perp. He is obviously selling something which is not just as department approved. After securing the four juvies and placing their weapons in your lawmaster storage compartment, you call to in a catch wagon and continue on your patrol. How awesome is this, guys? Having dealt with a few more minor perps, you are or excuse me, you're contacted by control. Dread, we have reports of a theft at Goldblings the Jewelers on Hip Hop Street. Our street. Proceed there at once. Manager of the store is reporting the theft of items. The perpetrator of the crime is still on the scene. You race there on your lawmaster. When you arrive at the store, you're led in by a female shop assistant. Inside, two men are arguing loudly. The first is a thin black man in a shiny red jacket and gray slacks. He wears several pieces of jewelry, a neck chain, several rings, and a pair of earrings, and a name tag with the legend L. Brown Manager printed upon it. The second man is Hispanic with a mustache and wears a white jumpsuit with orange city slicker brand casual shoes. When they see you, both begin to raise their voices and attempt to get their side of the story across. It quickly becomes clear that L. Brown, the man in the shiny red jacket and the name tag, is the manager of the store. The second man in the white jumpsuit is the accused thief. Pointing at the accused, the manager exclaims, This man stole three entire trays of expensive rings. Arrest him. Three trays? The alleged thief cries. I've never been so insulted. Hey, judge, don't you listen to him. Search me if you wanna, but you'll find nothing. He accuses me of being a cheap thief. Pa. In one minute, I take out the trays, the manager continues angrily, and when I turn my back for just an instant to fetch another, all of my beautiful rings had gone. It had to be him. No one else in the store was close enough. No one but you, the alleged thief interrupts. I bet you stole the rings and hid them and do this all the time. You was nothing but a liar and a rat. The accused continues his protestations, and as their argument goes on, the volume increases, so they are shouting at one another in an attempt to drown each other out. You can do one of the following. Question the shop assistant to see what she can add. Search the alleged, alleged thief. Search the manager. Search both men and search the shop. Check any security cameras. Check with control to see if they have any information on either man. So let's question the shop assistant who let us in. The assistant, one Millie Nod, explained she was just cleaning a display case when she heard her boss, Mr. Brown, shout THIEF. As soon as he did so, she hit the alarm button which caused all the doors to lock. The alleged thief was trapped in the shop with them, and they have been arguing ever since. Hmm. So, let's uh, check with Control to see if they have any information on either man. Control comes back with information on both. According to tax records, the shop manager, Lucius Brown, has held his position for six years. His criminal history is negligible, some minor trouble as a juvie, but nothing to warrant anything more than a verbal warning. He's had no reported criminal activity as an adult. The other man is Armando Del Greco, an emirate from the Pan Am conglom. He's been in and out of trouble since he gained citizenship, with a dozen arrests for petty theft. Nothing in the last few years, though. Records indicate he has a prosthetic left arm, top of the range, and impossible to discern if you do not know what you're looking for. Oh... Okay, well, let's go ahead and check the prosthetic arm then. Perp record. You grab the man and give, well, let's wait for that to go away. Give his false arm a good yank. Sure enough, it is a prosthetic limb. You begin to remove it, but not without pro <laughs> protestations from him. This is brutality. You're attacking a handicapped man, judge. <laughs> Shut up, or I'll do this to your other arm. This threat, even though it's one you would never carry out, serves to keep him quiet. A merciful outcome. The arm itself appears to be fitted with some sort of powerful vacuum cleaner, and you find the missing rings inside a pouch within the arm. The full workings of this will probably need to be looked at by the techs. Three years creep, plus six months for lying to me. But I did no lie, Judge. I did not steal three trays, just one. That pig over there must have the other two somewhere. 
While searching the shoplifter, you find a small black and white gadget with a red button on it. If you have found one of these before, turn to 826. Oh, so another one of those toys, I guess. When you press it, a tiny voice blasts out from a speaker. Creeps never learn. The LED display has a number 210 on it. Having examined the voice of Dread, you can now deal with the perp. Do you add another six months of his sentence for lying to you? Outside, or would you prefer to march him outside to the holding post, leaving him to make his outrageous claims to your back as you then leave to continue your patrol? Hmm. Well. Hmm. To your back as you then leave to continue control. Yeah, we got to make a, got to make a, a statement. You know what I mean? All right. Well, I think this is good, guys. We're going on to another call. I'm really liking this so far. I hope you guys are too. This is really well written and really well thought out. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the story, how the story pans out. But I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you liked it, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.